Uh, okay. Uh, sorry, starting a tiny bit late. Uh, 4.01 p.m. on September 10th, uh, 2024. We are here for a special meeting of the Lake County Board of County Commissioners uh, with just one agenda item, uh, discussion and consideration of an agreement with Denver Metro Security. Uh, sure. sure. Um, <clears throat> so we currently have, do you want to do No, either, either, either way. Right. Um, you, in your packet, you have the memo and uh, the PSA um, that we've thrown together. So this is to provide uh, post-certified security to watch an inmate, inmate who is currently in our uh, custody um, at a hospital in the Front Range. Uh, I heard that uh, you'd probably be uh, in the ICU for another two weeks, so $80 an hour for two security guards for 24-7 coverage, about 53000 so I put it not to exceed 60000 on there, just because we don't know what will happen. Um, it was, uh, when this person uh, can be transferred out of the ICU, they can go to Denver Health. Um, to the general hospital where uh, the Denver County Sheriff's Office can provide uh, security for much cheaper, so we'll cross that bridge when we get there um, with an IGA with them. Um, but that is what this is for. And the, I would say, that for those of you aware, once an inmate is taken into custody, the cost of care transfers to the jurisdiction that, is, that has their custody. There are statutory ways we can attempt to recover those. But that'll be dependent on whether this inmate has any assets to recover against. But we'll be researching that. But yeah, it's not going to be an inexpensive oh. endeavor. Um, this is just for the security for this individual. Um, the hospital bills and such will follow. And we'll probably so we're going to have something. So we could be on the hook for all the medical treatment that this. We will currently be um, the responsible the party for yeah as of well. As of the time he was served with the work for probation violation, because he was officially taken into custody for that. So whenever that was uh, served, so I'm it's assuming not, he doesn't have insurance. Uh, well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Statutorily, if he wasn't in, in custody, then it would be the medical provider would bill whatever insurance or under Medicaid or whatever that would apply otherwise. But in this instance, because he's in um, law enforcement custody, it transfers statutorily to the jurisdiction. So, the jurisdiction that that he was arrested in, or the jurisdiction that that it has is responsible custody. for have, maintaining the, the it care and custody yes. of him, so that's what would be Lake County. County. Yes, right. unfortunately. Oh yeah. So we'll be researching whether there are any assets. I'm not going to hold my breath on that in terms of our ability to recover. But this is it is going to be an expensive endeavor, especially for the next couple of weeks. Um, and then I, I'm not sure what Denver General so, will call so, so. charges for that afterwards. I still need to ask this because I, I mean, like I want to respect the safety of the hospital staff, but like I mean, if this was a private individual who was being this aggressive in the ICU, like who would cover that? I mean, like I mean, if so, it would. I mean, I. Question. It is a good <laughs> question. Yeah. We've asked. Um, so we've already exhausted the hospital security. That but I mean, there. If, again, if this is a private individual, the hospital would we'll call local would, law enforcement. If it, yeah, if, it, if, he was, if he was, if he was being, if he was yeah. being held up here, then the sheriff would be responsible yeah. for, for maintaining his care and custody in the hospital. So, okay, but so because he's transferred away from our jurisdiction, because we don't have an ICU, we don't, and we don't have enough staff to have a tw have the sheriff's deputies down there twenty four seven to watch this guy. Yeah, exactly. So we're on. We're, we're going to be on the hook for the security plus his medical treatment. Sure. And local agencies down there don't have any staff. They're all short staffed, so they don't yeah. offer anything. Uh, yeah. The sheriff did. He's looked at other firms, but uh, Denver Metro uh, Security provides post-certified officers, which yeah. You need to give it this guy. Yeah. yeah. I, I will just mention in my former life dealing with um, psychotic individuals in jails trying to figure out how to kick in Medicaid. There is a way with like a PR bond for us to get him out of custody on a bond, but still providing security that would allow Medicaid to be billed. It's not technically in custody. Does that problem, the problem with that is what he is represented if he is released from custody is that 
he intends to probably take his own life. Um, and so part of this is to restrain him in a way so he can be prosecuted for the crime that was in custody for. So he, yeah, he's going to have to be on suicide watch the entire time he's incarcerated. Pretty much what it is. They started, they started with the soft restraints and stuff, but those weren't enough to control So he's four pointed? I believe so, at this point. And there's no way you can move him to like a psych unit in DA or in Denver Health that has after the two doors. weeks well after two weeks the Denver uh, Denver um, Metro Hospital um, will they have an inmate ward there where they hold people they're in custody for that <laughs> I know it is insane. I know no I I I, I oh, it is the, insane. that is frustration of the world not any staff <laughs> I know, I know. Oh, okay I, I, I hate to say, I don't think we have an option. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. There, it, yeah. You know, as the memo suggested, you know, the sheriff uh, had told us he could try to research other less expensive ones, but the fact that they are post certified goes a long way with this because this is not just preserving the inmate in custody, but also the preservation of the potential prosecution of that person. As well. She brought this up when that state senator was here. <laughs> they need to change that law. Yeah. I think well, the federal law, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or again, have, have some. Yeah. It's a state code. It's a state code. Or yeah. some pool, you know, because. Yes. It know, helps with that. It's, a, it's better that you can't put a Medicaid while they're in custody. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. You, could, you, could, you could, if somebody was severely injured in that Iraq, it could be a million bucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, well, and that's similar to what exactly. we were concerned about over the uh, last year, the year before, with the. Child and child welfare yeah. being remanded to Lake County's custody. Mm -hmm. We pay for him and we take care of him. He was a very violent teenager. Didn't happen. Thankfully, we found a, a bed for him, but could have counties are the last resort. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I will make a motion to approve the PSA with Denver Metro Security not to exceed $60,000. Second the motion. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, call for a vote. Aye. 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 Thank you, staff, for dealing with that. Um, and I think we can adjourn this special meeting at 4.09 p.m. Thank you. Um, Thank you I had a suggestion. I know I mean, Hal needs to jet out of here real quick. I mean, for like next steps on this really difficult facilities discussion, like a suggestion I have and I think it'll answer like your questions, Tim, is like, I mean, let's sit down next with a live version of that budget spreadsheet. Because I think, you know, we can start plugging in, you know, we, we kind of did that way back. I think we can do that. It's like, okay, we know we're gonna have, okay, I think we're coalescing around for sure detention. So that's gonna be a 600 and something per year, you know, in a line. Let's see if we want to add anything else in off the bat for a little bit of court security or anything, you know, and then let's start piecing in, you know, some of the other line items and see what it does to the total at the bottom, you know. Line can, items for existing well, or programming that we yeah, talked yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. Let's I gotta say something real quick. I gotta go. Yeah. Uh, I, I, and just a recommendation that I think, I think we need to get Sammy in on this and we need to have a, some kind of a communication strategy around what we're what we end up doing and what because yeah. you know you know how people are man they could just yeah. run buck wild and say oh they're doing this and that and that, and that, and that. so i think we need to start thinking about some kind of a, a communication strategy for the public to, so that we get accurate information out there yeah. and not just rumors and any window and all this bs on on leadville bitches and moaners okay and and because you you know how it is oh i do yeah and then they're not going to understand they're not going to have the, the, all the information that we have and then whatever decision we do settle on you know yeah so because there's going to be people this is going to divide the community there, there's 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 going to be people that are going to perceive this as the schools need help and they're going broke and and you know and or, you know, we need to preserve that school or, you know, and then there's going to be the camp and we need something new and all this stuff. So there's going to be all these different factions. 
Yeah. Right. I'd rather help the school financially. Huh? I'd rather loan the school money and get the I mean, building for it because then we have time to figure out what actually happens with that building and do some planning. Because um, I'm just curious. Question, the LOC wants to know if they want to do an October or first or second follow-up to that feasibility meeting to be delayed. Is that an opportunity for us to be like, these are our finances, like this is our budget, this is what we can or cannot afford. Like, do you still want to move forward with that second meeting? They offer the first or second of October with some of these updated numbers. I mean, I think if, 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 they're, if they're going to continue any level of work for us, it should be realistic and within the, the financial reality of the county. And, and I, I think that, that going, 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 continuing to go down the road of a facility that we just can't do is pointless to me. Yeah. But, you know, if we're going to keep them working, and let's work on something that's realistic and that might happen, and not something that there's, there's no way it's going to happen. And, and, and I mean, to follow, I, I agree with that. And I think, you know, this was really helpful to see, like, okay, like 20 or whatever, you know, 17 or 20 gets you two lap lanes and same temperature, you know, this and some other stuff, you know, like that was great. That was, you know, then you can be like, oh, well, I hate that, you know, or oh, a little bit of that, you know, gets you 22, okay. you know, and so, I mean, I think, you know, having a few of those options that are within some plausible future, you know, and we can, you know, is, is 30 million where things become just completely implausible but i do think we need to lead in with some framing of like did i mean i want to speak what, for, what this, this is not going to be the first thing we do this should be reverse <laughs> engineering yeah yeah based on our financial reality but but i think well, our financial yeah, reality is we have zero to get but to i think it. that's i think also <laughs> too if the, the board, no but i mean we need to say that the board's like, going to continue to consider LCIS. I would like approval at some point in the future to have a commercial uh, inspector come in and inspect the building. Because yes, we have the school district's master plan. It's all well and fine, but we don't have like an actual like inspection okay. report um, to take a deeper dive for the amount we're talking about. Also, keep in mind for the school district, it's three million dollars plus land for a future school site. What? It's three million dollars plus land for a future oh, school site. Plus some chunk of Harrison or something. something. No, they sure. want a new school site. So for their thirty to hundred year plan, if they sell, if they if they if they divest of LCIS in that location, they have nowhere else in this community to put a new school. So they need land yeah. for that. What, so it's three million dollars plus, plus land. When and comma one possible option could be some portion of Harrison was what I was trying to yes it could be the worst idea ever that came out of a commissioner's mouth but like that was good it. <laughs> me too <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay um all right what? but but, so but back steps sorry I never quite sorry. answered your question like I mean, the, I mean, my what what I think we should almost like start back with the filled in spreadsheet of like the other, you know, housing, economic development, paving things filled in, <laughs> you know, and then put in at least the six hundred and fourteen debt payment, but probably some more if we're well, gonna. We don't even. I mean. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, I well, agree with that. And like also the other programming that we don't have but could offer to meet community needs that have been discussed in the last seven years um, that we still haven't met. Um, like the human services programming and, and, and like building the adult wraparound program. Um, I, I mean, yeah, I, mean, I think sure. including that stuff yeah. in these, but like in my head, I can break that down into sub groups and categories. But I don't know how much we break that down for our purpose and or the communities seeing what we're considering not doing. Um, I also think that OLC should, maybe it never was a part of this, their scope, which I find disappointing. Um, 
like we should have the paths in each location or opportunity and like what those time frames look like um, and like the incentive like, yeah by site so the, yeah. the way their contract was structured was looking at those sites and then so high level at each site and fit we could go there with all that survey results all that then the way the contract is written is then for them to take a deep dive and design work on one site to get the costs okay so we got like Michael Yerman to come in and talk about the possibilities of building something on Harrison Avenue, whether it is a pool or not, or just childcare. And then well, the EDC so we'll have... and Tamara to come in and talk about like, I, I don't know how delicately we have to talk about any potential speculation on leveraging land at community field site. I think I, I think for some of the questions would be great for Michael for next week, especially for the line tech RFP. Being like, cool, what else do we get? Right? Do we do we get a pool? Do we do all these other things? Like, do we continue down the path of um, you know having both our Dola funded projects right overlapping? And like, is there the efficiency um, for doing the investment work or you know that infrastructure work at Harrison Ball Fields? Um, for pool and for housing, or is it, you know, is it just the same money down the drain? Yeah, and I'm um, not. I don't even know how to like. I mean, we didn't even decide we'd build a pool. Like I don't even well, know no, how we even it, distinguish have, that. So no, no, no. I'm not dealing. Yeah. I'm like saying that in a general sense. Like in, we're in fact, we we're, said we would. We're talking about this as if it is a foregone conclusion that we no. will build a pool. Ooh. And I can't put that ahead of all the other priorities yeah. that we have on the list. Absolutely. Well, um, yeah, no, I think all three of us are totally on the same page. And that's like, I think any, so to answer the OLC question, it's like, yes, they can come, I'd love to hear a presentation and get some community feedback on some of those ideas, but we need to start to open it up and say some really blunt things, you know, of course we're saying, but like, you know, really blunt things about like, I don't know how much I can do that. <laughs> if you want it, then you need to pay for it. We can't. Well, and that's, right. that's, that's, where, that's where the path in my head makes yeah. a lot of sense. Of like, okay, we see what the November election says. We see what, I don't know, any public-private partnership potential might be. Mm -hmm. But that's like years in the making. And I don't think that's years in the making with, I don't think taking on LCIS is a sexy option for whoever might want to invest and partner with us. 